So there's a in this place. The chat has already started. We're not even on and the chat has started talking about the uh, the Challenge Cup. Welcome to 4020 Live. It's uh, the 25th of March. The, the quarter-final draw will be made later this evening. Phil's rattling biscuits around. One of foxes, something rather. We've got new biscuits. They're yeah, beautiful. Mm, foxes, fabulous. Chocolatey indulgent creams, honeycomb. They are very Chocolate nice. coated shortcake biscuit with melt in the mouth, creamy sex. I mean, we've not even been paid to say this. So. No. No, that's in uh, in deference to Battle's fine effort against Casford in the Cup and the um, Fox's Biscuits Derby on Good <laughs> Friday. When I worked in Batley, I should have worked in a biscuit factory rather than a bed factory because that would have been great. I mean, it's nice getting cheap beds, but getting cheaper biscuits would be even better. Um, where do we start this week? Because it does appear that not a lot has happened. Um, or maybe it has happened, I just haven't noticed. The Challenge Cup happened. The Challenge Cup happened. Shall I read you what the people have been saying already? When my uh, phone works out. James, you're trying to read them off the screen. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think I can make it any bigger. Uh, no. I need a bigger Can monitor. you read it, Phil? No, I, I can't even have a forward. I haven't yeah. bought them. Yeah. I just know it exists. Really I just in, uh, like the excitement of Richard playing Jack and Ori. <laughs> Read, read I'm just reassuring it. myself that it's not just me. No, no, it is. It is. I small. can just about see the yeah. screen. And if I lean forward, I can. Um, I mean, everyone's obviously very excited because the, the the draw is being made later, and there was a suggestion that I could do the draw on the program before it's even made, but I forgot to cut out bits of. <laughs> so, who's left in it? Right, I'll make it up. Here's the draw now: Castleford, Huddersfield, Catalans, Hull, KR. St Helens, Wigan, Warrington League. There you go, that's the, that's the <laughs> It can't be Saints Wigan. Why? Well, they need the, a crowd at Wembley. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Hot ball. The, dart, yeah. the darts players aren't going to fix the bot, fix the draw. They're, they're well, one is a Wigan ball. fan and a Saint. The other's a Saints fan, aren't they? The so we're saying they shouldn't be doing it. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. No, they should the be. Draw. Celebrities, actual celebrities, if you like darts. And you think it's a sport. And you think it's a sport. I can't Which I do, but I'm not getting Some people it. don't do that. I mean, those people are obviously wrong. Um, but, you know. It's like snooker. The snooker is... Gonna, it feels like a, this is a desperate bank holiday Monday phone. <laughs> that is darts a sport. Phone, isn't it? What do you think about that flag on the English? No, 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 no. You were at uh, Headingley Phil, for Leeds versus St Helens. Uh, I was. Which, for once, was a game which would probably be better to watch in person rather than on the telly. We'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> uh, what happened? Uh, it rained. The, it wind, all, the it, wind was very cold. Was it all um, the referees' fault? Was it Chris Kendall's fault? That no. Was? St Helens are a fabulous defensive team. Leeds have not got the creativity to break them down at the moment. They hope that um, it was going to continue the week before and mm. elevate it to a level just didn't happen how do you explain that though i mean the weather was with the wet was the weather not i mean you were there on both nights so was the weather not similar on both nights? it was wet both nights. did they play the ball i see something about offside being mentioned on a, t on a tweet but i didn't i didn't bother clicking it because no. i didn't want to give the, the gratitude <laughs> to the author that, that wrote it i think the um the truth was that alex wormsley was back to his rampaging best and leeds certainly don't have a forward to match him very few clubs do mm. matty lees again was outstanding. Morgan Knowles in the early stages was brilliant. They, uh, St Helens suffocated the game because that's how you play cup tie football. Mm. Um, Leeds's one try was a 90 metre interception, which was very well read by Harry Newman, but that was mm. almost the sum total of what they created all night. And Did you put it I down right because we haven't seen it? Well, I like. Oh, really? Well, I like the fact that, yes, yeah, true actually, that. I think this, yeah, well, that was a, one of the moments where, I, not just <laughs> the only, but one of the moments I shouted at the TV. I like the fact he didn't just cross the line and was happy he to cross the line. He stepped inside John yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, is that a reflection on him? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, Benison did really well to chase back from the opposite side of the field. But yeah. Do that. I mean, he was never going to be stuck in a, an international football weekend. And they are a concern. And there's probably more than one reason for that. But looking at how the competition used to be is, is not going to tell you how it goes forward. No, it just... It, it, it felt a, almost a sad occasion. I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, now watching no, it, it, it felt like... You know, the, the, the sense of 
this these are two big teams in the sense that both have been successful in Super League era. These are two big me two big teams meeting early, if you can say that in the in the rounds, and one of them is going to go out. And it didn't feel like there was a sense of jeopardy coming through the TV. No, I think that's right. And I think if you look at with you know honourable mentions to Sheffield were you know for 70 minutes mm. we're, we're in a contest with Wigan um, you know Castleford were held at half time at Batley um, Featherstone put up a, a good show at, at Lee but none of them won no and, that's and I think very that's difficult. part of the issue mm. that uh, we, uh, do you want us to talk about the challenge we can, talk, we can talk about it now because I, I, I assume the internet's working now because uh, it was broken earlier but I think we'll, I think we'll Possibly. Um, I just think that, as witnessed by those results, the romance has gone from the cup. And you can't recapture it because in all of the games that I either watched or listened to commentary of, the difference between part-time and full-time was exemplified in all of those games. So, you know, Batley were fantastic for 40 minutes playing to play down downhill the hill. first half, yeah. But what beat them in the end, as well as players that are slightly more skillful who were full time, is fitness. Mm. The same with Featherston. You know, put up a great show against Lee, but ultimately, a full time professional team will almost always now beat a part time team. Mm. I listened to Halifax and Catalan, and full credit to the commentator who tried to make out that it was a more competitive game than it actually was, because after 15 minutes, when Tom Davis has scored three tries. You know Halifax are not going to win that game. Um, you know, I listen to Warrington and London, and we know what the disparity is. You know, London at the moment are almost still a championship team mm. in transition. They're, they're full-time, but they're not at that level. And none of these games really were anything other than exemplifying the fact that oil and water no longer mix, and they're never going to. And you look at the crowds, and, and one of the things that people said was, Oh, when a championship team gets a Super League team at home, that's what we want the Cup to be, and there'll be a big crowd and there'll be a big payday. None of those games had big gates. Because even if you go with the fact that it might be a slightly downgraded gate because it's shared, and, mm. you know, less than 2,000 at Halifax, you know, just over 2,000 apparently at Batley, it, it's not sustainable. So that even when they're at home and their home fans know that they're not going to win they're not going to pay 20 or 25 pounds to watch it so that needs to be addressed that full-time part time you, you can have whatever format of cup you want but you're never going to address that and the other thing is that these are all pay games and we are now a season ticket culture mm. we're in a, a time in this part of the world where obviously economics weighs very heavily um, so full credit to all the saints fans that went two weeks running to headingley and paid Twenty twenty five pound each time they went, but do they really feel like they're getting value for money when it's the same game repeated? Mm. It's it, it. I think you're right. I'm subdued the, is the word. Yeah, and one of the arguments that people would say week in week out on Super League is it it's on TV and therefore the crowds will reduce. Well, actually, we've probably not seen that <laughs> yet. We've got a week, and I, I get that it's, you know it's pay through the gates. The circumstances are completely different. But we had a week really where games weren't on TV and the crowds were low, so doesn't necessarily follow but the, the key thing is that as you've said people have to pay through the gate and I think people just take a view that actually it doesn't really matter if we get to a semi-final I, mean, I might go to the semi-final it's not value for money it's all about the final. because if you buy a season ticket and your average price of the game is probably £15 mm. or between 10 and 15 depending on the season ticket deal you can get to be asked to pay 25 for one game is, is disproportionately expensive yeah. I'm not saying that the games aren't worth it but we have bred this season ticket culture, which I understand because you know clubs are getting their money up front. I was going to ask you, but then I thought you're not a season ticket holder, probably at least. <laughs> but were season ticket holders offered an incentive to buy it? So, are they allowed? Because it's a shared gain, aren't they? So you'd have to run it by the other club as well to say, mm. well, if we do the tickets at this price. But would the same incentive be offered to season ticket holders for both clubs to say you can buy a ticket for, I don't know, the 12 is, quid, 14 quid instead of 20 quid. You don't know, you know until quite late who you're playing. 
you don't know who's at home, you don't know the cost of hiring a stadium. So if you're Huddersfield or Wigan and or Hull, you've got a de, you know a deal in place mm. with the cost of your stadium doesn't alter whether it's a cup tie or a Super League game. You're a limit to what you can do with your ticket prices. But I, you know, I I think that it's a fundamental issue about full time and part time, and nothing to do with what it was like in the 1950s or if you want to go somewhere from here and you want to have group stages, then to me the only logical thing you can do um, is now to divorce the Challenge Cup from the 1895 Cup and call it the Super League Cup if you want. You can have a group stage at the beginning of the season so you don't have meaningless pre-season friendlies and then you've got Super League clubs playing each other but for a reason. Um, you could also do it in a way that maybe you had... You've got 12 teams, so you know, it makes sense that you could possibly have three groups of four or four groups of three. Those games are meaningful at the start of the season. You may well want to pay to watch those because it could be the first time you've seen your team play. You can make them derby fixtures if you want. The 1895 sort of worked, mm. and you could have the group stages running side by side. You don't, you know, your championship and your League One teams who are part time then have the chance to get to Wembley solely through the 1895 Cup. Your Super League teams have more meaningful games and you know that the likelihood is that from here on in, for time immemorial, the Challenge Cup final is going to be between two Super League teams. So call it the Super League Cup. I was thinking about this earlier, especially with the FA Cup, which is the most similar competition we can think of. There's all this, it's almost a cliche, the magic of the Cup. It's, it, it, it's a cliche they just pull out on the TV when provincial side from the north plays Premier League side from the north oh look at that look Leeds are playing at Man United or whatever um, Leeds is provincial well <laughs> let Halifax, me pick up on that Halifax one. Town are okay playing, are playing Manchester United <laughs> I, I tell you what I was surprised Halifax played yesterday because Halifax Town's game on Saturday was called off I was thinking primacy of rugby league if, can you imagine Catalan's getting there and it gets called off that's magic isn't it um when was the cup last magic, if it ever was? When did the romance go out of the FA Cup? Because everyone's going to say now it's when Super League started and, we, and, and then a couple of years later the grand final came in and that took all the shine off the Challenge Cup final. Well, I think when we went full time. So then there was less chance of... Yeah. That, what's been the only shock in the last 20 years? Swinton uh, Brad, beating Bradford, Huddersfield? Bradford beat Leeds. Oh, Bradford are back, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. Swinton beating Huddersfield. But the fact that it's so hard to think of a shock... Um, I, I, in a sport like rugby league, it's com it's different to football. Yeah, you, know, you snatch a goal absolutely. that you can, you know, on the counter. Ten or men whatever. behind the ball. Yeah, and, but know. I think we were talking about it briefly downstairs. Um, the thing about the football now, particularly the upper echelons, is that there are too many competitions. So if you're Liverpool, say, and you're in Europe and you've got the League Cup and you've got the FA Cup and you've got the Premier League and you've probably got to fly off on your international weekends and play in Dubai or whatever it might be. Clubs are now using the cup competitions to play their second mm. string team or their um, squad players. So you've got a chance that there'll be an upset, whereas we don't have the opportunity to do that. So I don't think you can compare us to the FA Cup anymore. There, there could be a Portsmouth that could win the FA Cup. They, they might come up against you know, Manchester United reserves, effectively. And equally, those, we te don't have that. those teams that are through that structure are full-time. You know, If you're in the Championship, you're in League One, you're still full-time playing a full-time profession, yeah. professional team in the Premier League, so that the difference is should, in theory, be less. But uh, you know, there's been drop-off in the FA Cup. Mm. Yeah, you know, and and I think in all all cup competitions, name me a sport where a, a knockout competition is absolutely thriving at the moment. The old cricket competition, the Benson Edges Cup, on a it, that was at the start of the season, wasn't it? The NetWest struck Gillette at the second half of the season. They were they were big televised events, yeah. but they don't exist anymore. Rugby Union got rid of its cup properly years ago. The one that had the final at Twickenham, which Leeds won once. Remember Leeds? Remember what happened to Leeds? <laughs> and that's now just a reserve team competition, I think. Um, it would be a big call, though, wouldn't it, to rename the Challenge Cup well, in effect? I'm not you saying know, you have to. Oh, just the fuss we've had with the Harry Sutherland yeah, Trophy. You need the Challenge But what I'm it saying is... It remains as a Challenge Cup, but it's yes, just a Super League Yes, the Challenge teams. Cup is for Super League yeah. teams, the 1895 yeah. Cup, or whatever you want to call it after that sponsorship. It's whether you involve the community clubs in that in the same way that the Challenge Cup well, is. Well, I think they should be in the 1895 Cup. Mm. There's no reason why they shouldn't be in a Cup that potentially gets them to Wembley. Mm. 
But what you wouldn't want at the moment, and we, we haven't got now because the Super League clubs coming later, is you, you're not going to get the chance of. Mm. You know, the great thing for Siddle was playing Wakefield. Former Giants Wakefield. But I'm not sure that playing Salford would be of any benefit to them. But if you put if you if you go to a group stage, uh, group challenge cup, which is in effect what IMG were suggesting, weren't they? That you uh, could you not build that into your season ticket and have yes, those that's have the that, other thing. Have that that's design the, exactly, pre-season yes. when you produce your fixture list. These yes. are your fixtures in the group stages. Yeah. It's included because in your season you know ticket. You've got a certain number of yeah. home fixtures. Now whether everybody in the group plays each other home and away, probably not necessary. Mm. But you know if you've got one or two home games. That is part of your season ticket. So then your 10,000 season ticket holders have got no reason not to go. Um, I just think it gives more meaning early in the season. It, it gives you the opportunity marketing-wise to decide if you do want to include it and why wouldn't you. Um, and, and you get a great event at Wembley because you're appealing to different spectator bases. You're not holding out this promise of romance when it... it clearly doesn't exist you know you're getting excited about Wakefield being 80 minutes away from Wembley do we're never going to do that in the Challenge Cup no even when we were, even when we were 80 minutes well, away from Wembley it just wasn't happening so here's the ideas people have come up with which you know why, why don't we have an open draw from round one now interestingly because it seems to be forgotten and you can correct me if I'm wrong for a long long time the Challenge Cup didn't have any amateur teams or had one or two amateur teams they didn't have this spread of teams we're having now in the army and whatever else did so could does that work can we just stick in you know we're getting round one with well, it'd be just ludicrous yeah. it? you know it's there's a duty of care issue yeah. amongst you know with, with the greatest respect to you know and a, a community-based team you wouldn't want them playing a professional team it's you know no, it just it just doesn't work can so you imagine was... newcastle who we all hope will pull through and make you know at this stage that that they were given York and Wakefield in the 1895 Cup. What mm. would have happened if they'd been given a Wigan or St Helens? I mean, I remember going to watch Huddersfield Giants play. It probably it may have not been. No, they probably were Giants at the time. They played, was it Blackpool? Gladiators oh, or something? Was it, was it, was it this called? Is the 140 game? 132 nil or something like that. I, you know, that was a Cup game. But, I mean, that's a semi-professional team playing. No, you don't want an open draw. So, what about... In my opinion, no. This round of the Challenge Cup, as many people have brought up, um, Trust No One and uh, Steve Mascord. This is the Magic Weekend. All these eight ties are played at Ellen Road. For the, for the but you've still got to have competitive games. And my worry is that you're just tinkering on the edges of the real problem, which is full-time and part-time don't mix. And, you know, you're trying to sell a concept, aren't you, that may have been drawn two weeks before. If you're selling Magic Weekend, you don't know which teams are playing because no, you nor could do have you the know, previous rounds. Yeah, yeah, nor do you know what venues are going to be available. So, I also think work. as well that um, part of the problem at the moment is the Challenge Cup and the 1895 Cup seem almost divorced. So if you could line them up to be being played together, then mm. you would get more interest and a more... more a stronger narrative leading you then into a final where you know both competitions end up at Wembley. It's the date changing issue. People keep saying the date keeps changing for the final. Now we do get a year's notice. Or well, it doesn't help. We discussed that last year, didn't we? What was it? How many five different months in however many years that we've had a Challenge Cup final? But that's not a reason why people haven't gone in their thousands this weekend to watch games, is it? Frankly. On a weekend when there wasn't a lot else, to be honest. That's the well, other that's, thing. This, I mean, that's the other opportunity missed there, isn't it, this weekend? That, that, it's almost as if we needed the Challenge Cup. Well, it can't be next week because it's rivals round. And we can't have not, we can't have Good Friday without Saints Wig and the, the world will end if we do. We almost needed the round of Super League this week so we can have every game on the telly and the Challenge Cup the week before, but we couldn't have that because it doesn't work in the calendar. We need to be smarter about where we fit things in the year in the way that snooker and darts do that when there's an international break in football there's something on even though this week there was nothing on it was a really strange weekend when nothing was happening I know, I know you know isn't it sort of typical of rugby league that we've had games on every week and in the one weekend where you can think there's nothing on there's nothing on equally I mean I know it was on the Friday game was on iPlayer but dear me it was terrible we're just going to build up to that and then talk about that later 
Uh, <laughs> I think I'm glad I was there. <laughs> you were. You were. Don't watch it back. Um, anyway. Although we might be coming on to that soon. Uh, Carson lights it at Wembley last year, so that's good. I think the answer to the you know the, the crowds at Wembley is legitimate in terms of that date moving. That yeah. needs to be fixed, and and then you, you, it's a fixed date in your calendar, and you, and you build to that, and then and then the scheduling needs to be fixed. But it's not an answer. It's not an answer for what happened this weekend, and it's not an answer going forward. I also think that having it in the middle of the season is the right place to have mm. it, so that you do have the. We have had three or four really good weeks to the start mm. of the season. We know that the grand final now will attract the biggest attendance of the year. Something in the middle of the season that highlights you, and again, hopefully, timed around a, a weekend when maybe there isn't too much else going on. Um, Wembley still has a, a lure and attraction. Ask the teams that are playing in the eighteen ninety five both supporters and players, how much it means to them to be playing at Wembley, whether there's 3,000 in when the time their game's played or 23,000, it, it, it means everything. And I think if you start building that, you know, traditionally the date was early May. Mm. If we can stick somewhere in or around that date, then you can create, start creating a tradition. And I think if you've got four different teams there every year, plus your two women's teams who might make it six every year, then you've got an event you can build around. Whereas if you have it too close to the grand final, or you have it... I mean, we had it on a ludicrous bank holiday weekend, you know, the last weekend before <laughs> kids were going back to school. You were never going to get a different audience there. If we know now we're going to have it always at the same weekend of the year, maybe that's the middle of June, if that's now what we're going to stick at, and kids are still at school, they haven't started their summer holidays, and you can get back to that... Let's take them down there and give them a day out. Yes, but you could never do that in August. Mm. There isn't a simple answer to this. This is the problem. No, Everyone writes these it. articles. Five it's ways we can save the challenge. It, it, cup competitions are almost an anachronism from the Victorian age before they invented leagues. And when you look at rugby union, they didn't have leagues until the 80s. It's the like 1980s. It's worth persevering yes. because I think it's a commodity that mm. adds real value to the sport. I mean, you, you've you refereed a Challenge Cup final. But it must be a, a fantastic event, even, you know, from your point of view. Absolutely, because, it, yeah. because it's such a prestigious afternoon in the sports calendar. It's the oldest competition in rugby league, isn't it? You know, and it, and it, it still holds a soft spot in most rugby league's fans' sort of hearts, doesn't it? I, I think that's why people are probably passionate and, and, and probably a little bit despondent about it in some ways. But it, I think you're right. There, there isn't an easy answer. I, I, I'm almost of the view that the, the group stage is the way to go because it it provides the certainty of the fixture and you can put it into your season ticket and you've got to get bums on seats and you know tuning in on Friday it, it, it just looked terrible mm -hmm. you know and when you think talking about commerciality of the sport isn't it and driving revenue but and when you think the previous week that venue was buzzing I know with double the, same the fixture. double the amount of people in there then something clearly isn't quite working for the fans mm. because as a fixture it should have been more exciting than the week before because that the week before had been a really good game between you know two relatively evenly matched teams mm. so you go in there with the hope and expectation you're going to get at least the same again the fact that you didn't get it doesn't really matter it's the fact that only half as many people went so something clearly is out of kilter and, and we've spoken before about we have matches in pre-season that are duplicates of what's coming up oh. in Super League, <laughs> but also the almost the week before. The so if you turn that into something meaningful, but the the loop fixtures would go in theory, wouldn't it? They'd if, have to with the with the with the Challenge Cup group game. They'd I'm sure to. people would rather see a a group game in the Challenge Cup than in, in effect, it's a loop fixture, isn't it? Because you probably play yeah. that team. And again, if you but, know you, but if you know you're getting a home fixture and you want to call that somebody's testimonial game, there's nothing to stop you doing that either. Mm. So, I just think we we need to play with the cards we've got rather than the ones that we think we are used to have. And it would be great for the twelve apostles were still playing in round one. And it, it kind of feels, and it has felt for for a while, by the way, that that it only really gets serious at the semi finals. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But I think that's the same in the FA Cup as well. I know. Mm. I know the way. Comparing apples and oranges, but I think that's the same as well. Yeah. As much as ITV and BBC can say "Magic of the Cup, Magic of the Cup," it's not really there until you, you're well in the semi finals. You are at Wembley in, in the the FA Cup, and the League Cup's the same. Unless you are next to the game, what are the crowds like in the um, whatever the third division football competition, the Autumn Windscreens Papa John's Trophy. No one cares about that until you get into Wembley. Mm. 
So the semi-finals have been events, you know, in the last mm-hmm. few years. And the semi-final I did, we can say, at Elland Road a couple of years ago. It was, it, it was, was a great, great, it was a great, it was a great game, and it was a great day. And, and obviously, the, the, it was a double-headed with the, uh, with the men's other semi-final. And it, on that day, they had the women's final, didn't they? But you know, I don't know. The group stage just sort of, sort of feels like it has to be the only. The but but I would split it now. I, d- I do think that's the only answer. That listening to some of the games this weekend and you know gallant performances, but an unfair advantage merely by virtue of the fact that full time and part time can't play against each other. The alternative is you pick out you know the top six or whatever it is from the championship. But that hasn't worked this year. The year in, I know it hasn't, but it, it provides so, some element of reward if you finish in saying that top six but, or whatever. But what and, is the reward apart from? Getting beaten in a low crowd. What what is the reward? I don't think that's the problem. This weekend has well, highlighted I there suppose, isn't a reward. You know, you know, if, if, if how Halifax, many crowds will Batley get this year at two thousand? But if Halifax had got five thousand, yeah. and if Batley had got, but then they only had a week to you know to to publicise it, didn't they? And it, but if it's in your fiction, then you can. I be, I would think that Batley and Dewsbury on Good Friday will get a similar crowd to the one probably. Batley had for Castleford. Yeah. I know prize money is an issue, and obviously, as we've read, teams are losing money hosting games in the competition. But one thing we do have to remember about prize money is, I told Fred, his adverts can be on the telly these days. He can advertise his bookmakers wherever he wants. Now, the good people at Silkcut, they couldn't advertise their SIGs on the telly because it was banned. So the only time they got TV advertising was sponsoring all of the sport, which is why I mentioned Benson Hedges earlier, Embassy Snooker and Dart. Everything was sponsored by SIGs and they could put money in because they couldn't spend it on TV advertising. Now, is that an excuse for prize money being rubbish these days? No, of course it should be bigger. Blah, blah, blah. But we've got to remember that fact that for 20 odd years this sport was funded by the tobacco industry. But, in but I don't see what up in the prize money does really because it it's not that the teams didn't do it a disservice the teams are not doing it a disservice it's just that there's not really the, the public buy into the competition really yeah. so if the public yeah. can't buy into it then we know where it will end up eventually and so we can't see and, it going, and, oh, it's, and like, it's easy to say oh it's the RFL's fault because X, Y and Z no, it's, it's not. not you know everybody's got a duty if you're a season ticket holder and you didn't go to the Challenge Cup game this weekend you'd have to ask yourself well why I mean I'm not a season ticket holder so I don't you know it's difficult for me to answer we can assume can't we but Hypothesise, but but ultimately, one would think, well, hang on a minute, I, I don't want to fork out 25 quid, I mean, we, but I don't we, have to. We got a very romantic final last year between two teams that finished fourth mm. and fifth in Super League. So, you know, what we want are the opportunity for, you know, S- Super League teams who perhaps won't make a grand final to have a day out at Wembley. See, Andy is a Warrington fan. Who thinks it's going to be a Warrington Wigan final, by the way? That's what everyone wants, he says. Everyone outside St Helens will want to see it. Uh, but he does say he'd rather he would swap a Super League win for a Challenge Cup every time. Well, that's you know, that's, that's a complete hypothetical thing. Uh, yeah, I'd be interested <laughs> to ask uh, his age, um, just because I, I I I think the younger generation would prefer to win the Super League Grand Final because that's what they've they've grown up with, um, it being effectively the the premier. The Premier yeah. Trophy, the Premier Competition, isn't it? I, I think it's hats back to a another era, really, in some ways, isn't it? And the answer. And I'm not trying to take anything away from no, the Challenge Cup because it no. still is prestigious, prestigious, as a, as you've suggested, and as I've already said when I refereed it, I was absolutely delighted to do it. But, um, I, I again, I don't think you can compare anything we do and the history we've got with Australia, but it is noticeable that they don't have a cup competition. And the cup competition they used to have was a midweek cup competition, which again, a lot of the top line teams didn't put all of their best players in. And it gave the opportunity for either representative teams or metropolitan teams to come in and play them purely for television on the midweek. Because what they have is a sacrosanct league competition that is a narrative that rolls on week to week. And the stories from this week become the tales of next week. So everybody wants to know when... South Sydney are going to win there, for, yeah, but and the crowds are up and and they build it to this peak event at the end of the season. We sort of have got a little bit of that, but we're also carrying a Challenge Cup, which means so much to us. Mm. How do you manage to balance those two? And we haven't had to do that before. 
What did we do when we had the County Cups and the Regal Trophy as well? It was, it was a different era. Um, and, and it the, gave more people a chance to win things because they were all off a relatively level playing field. Mm. And he's 55. So he's one of yeah, the uh, well that's, that supports my theory, doesn't it? Yeah. Don't say that. The so Queen what? stopped going to the Rugby League Challenge Cup Finals when the last one she attended was sponsored by Silk Cut. She never attended another again. Didn't give her enough free cigs, obviously. So. And they all went to the media. Yeah. Can't libel the Queen, so that's all right. Um, which was going to be a great feature on Radio Yorkshire, but we'd never got into that one. James says, he says, quickly moving on, it's a bit like the Scottish Cup in a way. Big gap from all the other sides and Rangers and Celtic. Similar gap from semi-pro in the Championship and the pros of Super League. I should have said the Scottish FA Cup, shouldn't I? I should have used that as the example. Which I think is older than the FA Cup. It's wider as well than Barcelona, what it was. That was the Challenge Cup, apart from the TV coverage of Friday night. Now, I was working, so I've recorded this to watch back because I need to write something in my code because I still yeah. haven't watched it. That's the hell of a In fact, that is his code. That's exactly <laughs> what I said. I, I, yeah. I, I sent a message to Richard on Friday night. I said, well, that's your column written. <laughs> well, let's see what I've written so far in my notes because I've, I've written three things down so far. Um, first is... JJB says domestiques. Can you remember what he, he he said it the other week? And I can't remember why. <laughs> Second, <laughs> domestiques. Is, well, yeah, he, 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 I don't even know it, what that means. It's like the, they don't use it in the Tour de France for like the the rubbish riders or something, <laughs> the, the young riders or something. I don't mean not saying Leeds players are rubbish. That's what I'm saying. Harry Newman not putting the ball down. Well, we didn't see it. It says, and then the third point I've put is Adam Fogarty was in Beyond Paradise getting killed at the same time as the Challenge Cup was on. So that's your rugby, that's the Rugby League column this month on TV. <laughs> Beyond Paradise, Adam Fogarty was there, presumably killed with the Harry Sunderland trophy in the back. I, I assume from your comments about the coverage, um, it wasn't the same level of technical commitment that we normally see on this program. Yeah. <laughs> with a super loop. Can put two cameras correct, up if you correct. want. Correct. I mean, it was a two. Well, I was going to say it was a two-camera production. It wasn't because it, it, it had a they had a, a tight and a wide angle from the from the south stand, and they they must have had <clears throat> one in the southeast corner because for for some unknown reason, whenever there was a penalty goal or conversion attempt on that east stand. They would choose that southeast stand yes, it was camera. A weird angle, wasn't so it? you yes. you'd no idea whether the ball went through the post or not. Instead of having just using the main south stand camera, which had a perfect view of whether the ball went through, and you could see the touch of just flags, they for some reason chose that angle where nobody could tell anything. So is this a direct or directorial issue or I mean the other thing is we didn't have video referees, which in some respects sped the game up and was quite nice. And you went with whatever the referee on the field said. Don't think he got anything obvious wrong. If Harry Newman's try had been in a Super League game, we'd have spent ten minutes deciding whether he was offside or not. But people just got on with the game, and and I don't understand though why we didn't have video referees because if it's a prestigious cost, it'll be but all about cost, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, clearly, you know, the BBC uh, minimised the cost, didn't they, on on that Friday game with having the minimal number of cameras. I, don't, I, I didn't. I didn't. I switched off at half time. Um, but I understand. So did Leeds, funnily enough. Yeah, I, I understand that <laughs> they did. They didn't even have any discussion at half time. It was clips shown of of footage from another game. Which I I, so, I will say is fair enough because. Um, so there was no it's presenter. Just easy to, no, 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 it's analysts. just straight into. It was, it was like the coverage of the early rounds of the competition where they're at. The amateur wherever, amateur, yeah. 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 So, but then you ask the question. Well. That's fine for, and this is going to sound like I'm disrespectful to civil versus whoever, aren't I? But that's fine for the army versus whoever, but it's not for two Super League teams. Because it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right to me. Well, people will make the comparison with the week before when it was the all singing, all dancing, full yeah. stadium. I'm not just that, but the, it felt like there was very little crowd noise. So whether they had a sound boom or not from the crowd, it didn't seem that there was no refs mic. Which for most people might be a, might be joyous, so you don't have to hear the whole go. But for me, detracted because you particularly when you want you hear those conversations where he brings players out because there was a fracas, wasn't mm. there? Ended up almost in the in the south stand. Mm. That's the time where you want to hear what the referee is actually saying to the players. Um, so I, I sort of lacked a little bit of that. I, I, the, the the direction selection of cameras w was poor, and I didn't think the commentary was very good. So all in all. I, 
I thought it, I thought it was a poor effort from the BBC and and then you know for a, what we've said about the prestigious competition, mm. it doesn't come across that way. Um, but having said that, if rugby league's public can't get behind it and support it in the numbers, then why should the broadcaster? If you want to play devil's advocate, extremely fair. The, the, they would have been better not showing it. It, it just it just looked poor. It just looked poor. And and to miss someone putting the ball down for a try to show show the crowd, I don't understand that. And you go back to or the next day when the sportsmen are doing their game, it looks much better. Now that shouldn't that shouldn't be the case. Whether yeah. they only decided to have so many cameras there because it was only on the red button, I don't know. I mean, this shows you the difference between when we spoke at the start of the season when Sky announced they were showing all the games and we didn't know exactly what the other games were going to look like, whether they're going to be when they had that experiment a few years ago when they showed some games on the red button where they shouldn't have done because they weren't allowed to. And it was just one or two cameras, wasn't it? But it, as it turns out, it's more than acceptable for TV coverage to what Sky are putting out there for the games that will be eventually streamed and not on the normal TV. But this was... Well, the other, the other thing I don't understand is, you know, quite rightly say it's only on the red button. It's actually on Sky. On Channel yeah, Sky 9, Channel 970. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's the BBC yeah, those numbers red in the button. 900s. And so obviously, yes, as far as the BBC are concerned, it's behind their traditional programming. But if you wanted to record the game, if you wanted to see it in the similar style as, as you say, the games that are, are not the featured games on, on Sky, the, the, the Super League Plus games, if you like, then you could still watch it. The thing is, the thing is, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I, I, I don't know whether the BBC pay to broadcast the Challenge Cup. Well, there's a big They're question that to. no one does. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's it. Never been. <laughs> no, and but then, how do you, you know, if you're a public broadcaster paid by a license fee, you have to justify the spend. It's like a lo- mm-hmm. local council that used to work at the council. How do you then justify spending? Additional money on, well, a, on, the, a, on the a game. B, the BBC's argument is the money that they're putting into showing the Super League can only come out of a similar sort of budget of something has to suffer. So this round of the Challenge Cup now is, for want of a better word, downgraded in terms of the resource they'll put into it. But it's not that they're not putting that resource into rugby league. It's just that they've got a, well, they've got a pot of money and they've, yes. used to, they've spread that in different ways, haven't they, by showing Super League games. Uh, some of which are on the red button, some of which will be on TV. Some of which will but, be on BBC Three. But the quality of those games, the broadcast of those games is far better. Yes. Because they're than taking that. Sky's... The, which they are with the Catalans White correct, games. Yeah. We can, that's going to be Sky's production. So Sky they, won't, they won't mention Sky on the broadcast no. because it's been taken on the BBC. Because Sky have paid for that production, they just take, mm. they just take the feed. Um, so the cost to them is minimal. Yep. So it probably costs them more to do Friday's game than it does to do yes. do the Super League games in actual fact. I know they've got to pay a presenter and they've got to pay a commentary team, etc. but an analyst. And Production that, but, team. But yeah. Um, so so someone to count with... Oh, they didn't have the tackle count on. I mean, I can do graphics on here. Well, I saw something on Twitter about some people making the mistake. I think it was Facebook, actually. They said Helen's <laughs> STH like with a red background and looked like fifth tackle. Um, and I, I actually thought, well, they're not even in red and white. They're in... Black, black and red, yeah. the colours aren't quite right. Whether that was because it wouldn't look great in terms of being able to read it, fine. But a bit like uh, Lee's yeah. numbers. Correct. All in all, you 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 should be glad you were there and not watching it on TV. Oh, I was delighted when I got the feeling back in my feet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, it, I don't. The whole of the round, and, and there's probably isn't a lot of point analysing every game. Well, since we've seen none of them. <laughs> well, I've listened to a lot. <laughs> Felt as though. It wasn't an occasion, mm. which we're going to get a quarter-final draw later tonight, which is going to be another round of Super League games, isn't it? So we've ended up where we say we think the competition is by the second round that the Super League teams have come in. I can see the demographics of our viewers uh, on, on uh, the, the YouTube and, and who listen to the podcast or listens. What I can tell by the chat is about 50% of our audience are called Ian. <laughs> um, now, babies are not called Ian these days, are they? Ian says, "Why has Phil got a downer against Halifax? We were playing Catalan. How many will have come over from France for this game?" I haven't got a downer. downer. There's, There's no, no downer. There's no downer. It's the reality of against Hull this week. Um, oh, that was the thing. They kept spelling things wrong. The graphics as well. The half time it said Catalan and not Catalans, and they spelled the word lightning wrong, which I thought was very poor for the 
for the, the national broadcaster. I mean, if I spell things wrong, I'm ticked. But... We're not making a point about any team other than the fact that you cannot expect a part-time team to compete against a full-time team, and that will affect the attendance well, when it's an all-pay attendance. And there's no detraction of Halifax supporters, but clearly not that many of them went because some of them will have thought it's a tough spend and others will have thought... Do I really want to go when I sort of know there's a foregone conclusion that I'm going to watch? That's yeah, all but having said that, I mean, I remember the days when, you know, when Dewsbury played Wigan, I think, in the Challenge Cup and it being, you know, something that, wow, this is, you know, Dewsbury Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but the, Super League Jason Robinson and all those. And, yeah, but that's, yeah, no. that's at the start of when you're starting to realise that yeah. you're never going to get parity between the two but teams. But you, you, went, you, you went as a Dewsbury fan knowing that there's no chance of winning. But you went in a way a little bit like the World Cup Challenge to see the stars that you see on TV in person. Now, whether that's because it was a championship club playing a Super League team, I don't know. But I would imagine, I don't know whether the gates, if you go back 20 years, the gates would be higher, wouldn't they, for the equivalent round? But, it's but there wasn't as much rugby league on telly either. So no. if you wanted to watch that Wigan team, there was an incentive to go. Now you can watch that Wigan team play every week yeah. on telly. I dare say the technical quality of the BBC's coverage would have been better in the 1950s at any league, <laughs> rather than uh, it was on, on... When there was a spiral staircase. Uh, a bit harsh. Um, Ian Bolter, he knows about uh, making films and stuff, uh, much more than I do. It was vanity directing, trying to find arty rain shots rather than covering the game. Just in case you didn't know it was raining. Was it raining? Heavily. Raining. Um, Carlson says, just want my tickets to fly to the Magic Weekend. Has Phil got space for a tent? There's plenty of places around uh, Ellen Road. Consider Carsten. it done, Carsten. It's one of the uh, more luxurious areas of Leeds. I'm sure you know that, but Carsten, just don't leave your tent anywhere unattended. <laughs> in uh, Beeston. South Leeds, isn't it? Um, I think we'll probably find him some accommodation in the north of the city, should he need it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Challenge Cup done? I think there's nothing more we can talk about the Challenge Cup. Apart from the game, I mean, there's the, nothing to say about the games that happen either, is there? I don't think. Well, I don't think people would have predicted, for, was it 40 nil Hulk, yeah. Sorted. Oh, and, and we, oh, we do need to talk about the other. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Hull clubs. So obviously going into the derby on Friday. Hull are winning forty nil. As you say, that that's a surprise. Because Salford are a decent team. We know this. They, we're, that's a surprise result. Hull FC conceding fifty. That's not a surprise. What is going on? There's no point in spending half an hour on Hull FC. I think we said it all last week about them. They're just a complete basket case. <laughs> Whereas Salford, you go. Well, they'll bounce back this week. Who've they got? They've got rivals around. Have you? They're playing Lee. They're big rivals. Yeah. So they'll bounce back in that. The other thing about the Challenge Cup and its knockout format is clearly there comes a point when, as a team, you know you're not going to win. Yeah. Which is not to say you then necessarily take your foot off the gas, but. You know, there's nothing that you can do that can change this result. There's no point putting down a marker for the following week and perhaps even risking injury if you're already 20, 30 points behind. Um, you know, London will have been credible at Warrington, but they would have known very early on that they weren't going to win that. They gave debuts to a couple of young players, which is great to see. But, as, you know, that when it gets to 20, you're not going to come back from that. No points difference to play for. No. But that Huddersfield Hull FC result is embarrassing again. But conceding fifteen consecutive weeks. Well, I don't know what is... cumulative points conceded is, but it's 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 mounting, isn't it? Ryan Hall getting closer to overtaking something in the uh, try scorers table because he scored two at the weekend. In the no, because they were in the cup, not in the su- not in Super League. Um, in the women's Super League, uh, women's Challenge Cup, even it's all sponsored by Betfred. I get confused. Um, <laughs> Barrow. Who lost to County the week before? Almost beat Wigan, but Wigan scored uh, a goal in the last minute or last few minutes to uh, win twenty points to eighteen. Support Barrow, uh, Cardiff. Great win. Fifty-eight nil over Salford. Get them in Super League. Five tries for Healy, whose name I've not got because I'm the back page of the paper. Um, Featherston thirty-eight, Sheffield six. So that's a deep, you know. To say that Sheffield are in the, the Championship and Featherston are in the Super League. Um, Leeds winning 19 at Hull KR. Well done to Hull KR for playing and not giving up. Well done for like, that Leeds' record score, I think I read on Twitter or something. I think it was maybe too shy. Too shy, sorry. 
Maybe they'll break it next time. Um, Huddersfield beat Lee 36-6 and Warrington beat London away from home 24-6. And again, close result for you know, London again, another team who are building things somewhere other than the north of England. Um, the, the disappointing thing is, of course, that uh, Bradford couldn't raise a team and lost to St Helens 48-0. The bookmakers had St Helens winning that one 70-0. So that's actually... It, it could have made it harder for London or Warrington had they had results differently qualifying for the next round. But it hasn't, so it's OK. But I don't think they should be in the competition next year. I don't think any club that forfeits a game in the... And, and this goes for Castleford as well. How can Castleford pull out the competition and play a game at the weekend? They pulled out the Challenge Cup weeks ago, but they played a game. So they've got players. So how can you... So you don't get invited back. Invite the army or someone else. And it, Castellan. They, it don't matter if they get beat. Invite another team, Alton or whatever. It don't matter if they get Castellan beat. Castellan women and a half a million pound yeah. bond. Because at least they've fulfilled their fixtures. How easy would it have been for Hulk KR just to say... Absolutely. And I'm, I, Bradford say they've got legitimate reasons why. That's fair enough. But they shouldn't have so many injuries after one week where they can't fulfil a fixture the next week. And if players can't get time off work... But what can you do? Should be and, and it was a home Sorry. game as well. I know people th think this is anti Bradford again, well, but it's, it's anti anyone who does that. So, same for Castleford. Um, I don't know when the next women's games are. Probably this weekend, I don't know. We'll see. League One North, <laughs> North Wales were at Cornwall, 40 points to 16 at Truro. Keith Leak beat Workington 58 16. To Midland. go top of the league. There you go. Big top, top win there. Yeah. Mm. There's big two big losses that working to have the first, first two weeks. I know they played, was it Oldham in that first game to be fair? And Keith played probably the two favoured, but two big scores. Yeah, there. I mean, they were only 10 points above Newcastle on points. There was Newcastle lost by 70 points to 16 at mm. Midlands, which is obviously a great result for Midlands, but Newcastle still trying to build something. 377 at Midlands, so they're trying to build something as well. And the, obviously, game of the weekend, Rochdale 24, Hunslet 26. In front of just short of 450, so an important win for Hunslet, who are the other team at the top of the table with two wins from two. And who plays each other this week? It's some fantastic games, oh. really. One Hunslet Keithley at the top, um, Newcastle working to wow. at the bottom, yeah. which again, you know, not quite a local derby, but a lot of interest in that. North Wales Midlands and Oldham Rochdale. Almost rivals round in League it, One. It, and the same in the... Obviously, it's Derby fixtures in, in the Championship yeah, where as well. Bradford take on Halifax, Dewsbury Batley, Doncaster Sheffield, Featherstone Wakefield, Whitehaven Barra, Witness Swinton and York versus Toulouse on the Sunday. That well-known Derby. Yeah. I mean, why is, why, is, <laughs> why is York Toulouse not on anywhere this weekend? Why is Featherstone? But those look, all look really good fixtures mm. in both of those divisions. I just think if Premier Sports, had, if the if the clubs had signed that deal last week, which wasn't going to be signed, all these games would be on this week because they're going to show all the games on their non-existent TV channels that no one's picked up on the fact that they don't have any TV channels yet. But that's good, isn't it? So, I mean, the one thing we do know about rugby league is that if you put a competitive game on, it's worth watching. And, and that goes back to the beginning of this talk about the Challenge Cup, that all of those games, if you're a neutral fan, you might think, I could go to any of those and I will see a competitive game that really means something in a context where there's, there's something at stake. Well, that's what we haven't got in the Challenge Cup at the moment, in, in my opinion. I think you can have it, but you have to manipulate it and now acknowledge that to get those games that mean something and that are between teams who are relatively evenly matched... You have to keep them apart. West Tigers won again. Won it well. So that's exciting. Benji can coach. That's that's all the uh, the news from the NRL. South Sydney is still rubbish as well. There's, a, there's only one team undefeated. Yeah. Which is you know again if you are they, are they going to remain undefeated after they play the Brisbane Broncos? No, week? clearly not. But um, again, what you want at the beginning of a year is the fact that you think that your team that was poor last year can be great this year, or that the. the the uncertainty that your team that was great last year is still going to be this year, and that after three rounds, only one team is undefeated. Local media is brilliant. I'm a big fan of the BBC Cumbrian Sport Twitter feed because if they can find any tiny piece of Cumbria in any national sport event, 
they will find it. Steve Balfwick's from Cumbria, apparently. Cut just some useless rugby team, apparently. But they'll find anything. The Wakefield Express needs to do the same with Dom Young because he played well again. I mean, apparently did. they were playing against some, you know, some rubbish. But there he was. Scored a try. Did some running around. Try. He's got lovely hair. He's brilliant. He's a role model for in Wakefield. I just wish I had his hair and his height and his weight, to be honest. <laughs> and his that. talent. And his talent, yeah. Uh, all that stuff. So. And his money. And his money. Um, but I think about the Super League fixtures this weekend. It's rivals round. It's, yeah, and I think what's interesting is is this the first weekend we'll have in Super League where every game you can watch in the sense of oh, yes. they're all on at different times yes. on different days. So you don't you know you don't have to go back and hope that they don't show the score or whatever as you're watching the oh, it's gonna game be brilliant. live. It's going to be so absolutely I think, you know, brilliant. I know where that's happened before, but... Um, but again, it go, goes back to we've got out of this cycle of we have to have two games over each. If you have one game and mm. you can spread it... Mm. Spread it out, and you can you know, again tell the stories. Uh, you can go from you know watching Hull Hull Car straight into watching Wigan Saints. You create an impact with all of that. So um, I pointed out, I think we have, we do have a weird fixture formula, don't we? Because oh yeah, Warrington, Warrington, Hull and Hull Care Warrington again, are playing Warrington, Catalan again. Yeah, Wigan don't play Hull until round eighteen or something, which yeah. is big, big despite for Wigan because they might have gone for about three coaches by then. But, um, the thing is, we, I mean, Warrington's rivals will be the St Helens or Wigan, and they're always going to play each other, aren't they? So there's no witness no in the witness, competition. No. Yeah. Um, so I guess they they could play Lee, but then, but Warrington and Catalan, I think, have built up a, a rivalry. I also think that, that you know that is the first real test for for Warrington this year. That that will tell us what has changed. You know, they've done really well to get to where they are. Their sole defeat was against I was say, Catalan. Sole defeat, yeah. And now they're at home. There'll be a big expectant crowd. They're mm. pushing for the top of the league, and that's the test that you'd really want them to have to to know if they're more of the real deal than they were this time last year. Yeah, they're in his coaching box, chewing on some pens while Sam Burgess. Definitely not a vape. Definitely a pen. So we're all looking forward to that. I mean, they, it, it's kind of like rivals round works to an extent, and then you get the fixtures like London Huddersfield, where it's done. It's, can we rename it something different? Can we just say, these are big games, big game weekend and some other games that go on? Still would be, still would be a big London game. Like, show, I don't know. Well, no, but you, know, you just yeah, say, I'm like, Castle and the, Castle Leeds, that's big, and the Saints, Wigan, Derby, it's the only Derby, that's big, and Hull FC and Kulke it's a Derby as well, but we, not a Derby. The idea of having this, this rivals round works if you have, for me, if you have a series of rounds that yeah. are named rounds, we do it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, like I, I, the, heritage, the heritage round. round or whatever they have in the NRL, I really yeah. like that idea. I don't know why we, we haven't adopted that. You know, but each individual club can do, it, which doesn't make it a round. No, I don't. I don't get it's that armed idea. forces round. Where you can, you know, you can have it in round one or round twenty seven. Well, clubs like producing these kits. Don't they? Was it Castleford's kit the other week that was an uh, other week or the year that was a? Oh, the uh, war one that was the yeah, year after the, the war. The, yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. That, was, that was a great one. Man. <laughs> Had great Eddie fun. Excuse, there. Yeah. Great fun ripping the uh, Castleford media manager at the time about that one. I mean, so, it, you see the big injury at the weekend, by the way. You remember the World Cup? You remember Brazil? Their captain Maria, she's playing in Australia. She's broken a finger. She's trying to put it back in, but it's it's broken. So, all right. Get well soon, Maria Grassfinger. Um, so if you oh, well, Paul's mentioned the streaming thing. Four K season wasn't worth it to the clubs. Does the failure of the deal mean they can stream their own games? I mean. I don't see why not. There isn't I mean, this that's East, that's this Easter it. round would be perfect for some, some of the championship clubs to stream those games. I'm sure I've seen a tweet about a championship club uh, looking to stream their games on, on Super League Plus. Oh. Whether that's... I didn't, again, I didn't click it because I don't like to click these things. But having seen Cornwall put a clip out yesterday, and it had all the graphics on which you would see on an hour league production, which I thought was a bit odd because it wasn't broadcast anyway. But you, Clubs can, all you need is a laptop and a couple of uh, cameras stuck into it. Because you can do the graphics like I do on here. You can see all these graphics if, on screen. If Jews that's, that's that's Badly streamed their game on Good Friday, it's just after Wigan and Saints have finished. It's not going to detract from the crowd. The, the passionate fans of both sides are still going to want to be there. It's, it's an occasion, you know, you, you know, the heavy wool and mm. Good Friday. Mm. But if the audience you've got by watching... Hull Hull KR and then Wigan and Saints could necessarily pay a fiver and watch mm. Dewsbury and Batley and it would help the coffers of the clubs. I don't know why you wouldn't. 
I'm a leak. Still going. Who can say? Who knows? Um, I think that's it, isn't it? I don't think there's anything else that's happened this week. Um, unless you can think of something <coughs> off the top of your head. No, but that Saints Wigan derby is massive, isn't it? Absolutely. How many thousand yeah, you referee? Um, I, I, quite a number, um, but at, at Easter, I think I only did one Easter one uh, at Wigan, and it yeah it was one of the one of the highlights of my career to be honest. Refereeing that game, it's just it's already full sold, house at, sold out at TWS this week. Yeah, is it St Helens? The game I did was it was it was it um, was at Wigan, and it was a full house at Wigan. It was it was actually um, Eddie Hemming's last game on commentary. Um, was that why it was at full house? Might be. No, it was a beautiful day, like you know, like we had on Sunday, the sun was shining, it felt spring like, you know, and, and it's it just feels like this is what the summer competition's all about and full house and it was a great yeah. game. Um it's, that's it's gonna reflect to watch, so watching. well on the sport. Yeah. Um I think Cast Leeds is interesting because clearly um that's gonna tell us whether Leeds are Can they attack? Well, <laughs> who's the referee? Who's to blame? It, it's going it. to tell you whether they're as mentally fragile as they were for a large portion of last year. But it's also Castleford coming off the win. Is is mm. it, you know the one thing they would want to relaunch their season is to have the noisy neighbours at home. So I think there's a great story around that game for both clubs. Hull Hull KR is is almost going to be watching through your fingers. Mm. But if Hull are going to do anything this year with absolutely nothing to lose in a derby. They may as well go for it. I'll tell you what. I don't know what they've got, but they may as well go for it. You're brave if you're a Hull fan going to yeah. KR on... on uh, but that's a sellout, so there's going to be a great atmosphere for that. Salford Lee, two two teams again that love Looking to attack. Turn. You know, Salford, how do they respond to being beaten 40-0? Lee just starting to find a bit of form, but that'll have a lot of points in it, you would have thought. That will that'll be well worth watching. Warrington Catalan, we've already said, you know, yeah. this is the test for Warrington. Catalan have started the season pretty good form. They, they don't, you know, it's a repeat of around one game, which you know, <laughs> Warrington had a player, uh, you know, uh, couldn't beat a team with a player sent off. So, and then London Huddersfield, which I, yeah. uh, you know, good good luck to it's both teams Sunday. to make that into an event. But uh, <laughs> I should add that I should have said this last week, and I forgot that um, Liam Rush made his Super League debut as a referee in the in that London Warrington game, and I think the fact that we didn't mention. Mention him was probably a, a positive in itself, isn't it? Wasn't it? You know, because I I just thought he um, he refereed the game well, and he and uh, you know he wasn't particularly seen. And I, I don't always subscribe to this idea that you know that the best referees are those that are not seen, because sometimes you have to make decisions that makes you make you seen. But I thought it was a you know it was a solid performance for his debut, and uh, and, and good luck to Liam. And, and the other piece of officiating news is that Phil Bentham has started today, I believe. Uh, right. In a, now in a full time capacity as head of head of match officials, having left now. I think you may have broken the news. No, I don't think so. I think so. you may. Have. I've not seen that anywhere. No, well, he was in transition for the last few weeks, wasn't he? Uh, but yeah, today he starts. Yeah, yeah. James Veller has well been getting some good reviews. Yeah, unfortunately, I've not seen any of his games uh, yet. I think it's just the way it's, it's fallen in the games that I've seen. But uh, but yeah, he's he's had a good run of Super League games. I think he got his first two games at the end of last season to make his debut, and then he's. Carried off where carried on where he left off really at the end of last season, which is which is pleasing to see. Uh, James came to the UK just prior to the the lockdown, and uh, left his partner at the other side of the world, and and then ended up in lockdown, living in North Leeds somewhere <laughs> in a shared house. And a fair play to him, um, he stuck at it. His partner then joined him sort of post COVID, and and uh, you know it's really pleasing for him to 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 see him get the the just rewards. Keep thinking back to that last Castleford St Helens game. Just how everything just the next day was just different. It's weird, weird, weird. Should make a film about it. Uh, last word with Ian, another Ian. Uh, when we ditched franchising and brought back promotion and relegation, we marketed the competition as every game mattered. So now we have franchising back, we should market the comp. Most games, most games don't matter. Oh, that's <laughs> I think that'll work as a slogan. I don't know. Well, I think you know. I, I think to end on a positive. I, I think this week, this weekend, will show what the sport is 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 actually about. Yeah. You know, there's some there's some fantastic fixtures there, where they're not just in Super League, as you've rightly said, Phil. So, you know, if you're not, you know, get turn on your TV, watch watch the games, and if you're not, get to get to a game even better live, because uh, I think there's some there's some fantastic games coming up this weekend. But to be your cameraman on the top of the scoreboard, so you can film what's going on. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back on Tuesday next week because it's Easter Monday. We're having a day off. <laughs>
So uh, join us back. We're eating eggs. Eating the eggs that are cheap in the supermarkets. If they're not, if they're not, uh, we'll ha- riot about them more than the Hall fans will be after the derby on Friday. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and leave us a review on iTunes.